moving further into your acting career, mm. um, I mean, not to, it's not going to be in chronological order, cause I'm not sure which show was first, but what was it that sort of made you realise you could actually do this at a level which could be a professional level? It was, um, it was Bullet Boy. Okay. Yeah, it was that late on. I had yeah. done a lot of work yeah, before Yeah, because you were in Chill before then, yeah. but you still wasn't sort of sold into it. No, I was, at that point, I was, music was my life. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to be Biggie Smalls. I'm going to so be So how Jay-Z. did you feel like, like, having I mean, like, like, let's be honest, most people from your environment <coughs> generally um, mm-hmm. wouldn't, wouldn't have so many options. Let's be honest. Like, no yeah. one would, not many people would have sports, music. It was usually you've got one way out of the quote unquote hood. Yeah. How did that change you as a person, knowing that I, I know for a fact your surroundings didn't have that many options? So how did you deal with having so many options and working out which was for you? Um, I ran away from it, mm. to be fair, in the beginning. <coughs> Excuse me. This is why kind of Bullet Boy was when I started to take my career seriously because I'd changed and grown up and matured differently and been through soul, so the Soul Solid cycle and the mill, ended up in prison, and that's kind of when I was reborn in my in my own way, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? But before that point, I didn't want to like I was I I played piano on the weekends, do you yeah, know what I'm saying? Like I see I, the, and that's the kind of yeah. thing I really want to delve into because it's like I I come across these facts and I, even I'm still like, rah, like that's mad. And I know mm. a lot of people would think the same thing, but you still kept that very healthy balance of it's almost like Asher D and Ashley Waters, really. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. It, I led two lives, bro. But I, I'm not gonna lie, mm. like. You can ask gigs. Them, like, I grew up with all them, like, in yeah. it, Buck, whatever. So they would hardly see me every now and again because I'd be working mm. or like at Grange Hill, at L Street, this, that, or whatever. But then Burgess Park all day comes. I was there <laughs> with the man, them, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. bagger pecking boys and yeah. that, like letting off fireworks. We're out there doing our thing, whatever, going mad and whatever. And then back home, homework. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I kept on crossing the thing. Literally, like, People used to diss me. I had a moment, we, we were in so, we, we were at Radio One doing Live Lounge, so solid when we were at like the Heights. And we must have had lunch and we're sitting down just eating lunch in a green room and the TV was on and the young Indiana Jones come on. I did the young Indiana Jones yeah. Chronicles for Lucas Films when I was like 10 or something. And my little face come on the thing, riding a camel in <laughs> Morocco or something. And them were like, bro, <laughs> is that you? I was yeah, fam, yeah. But I'd done so much, like, people didn't really know, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? Like, how much I was grinding. But I just wanted to be normal. Yeah. So I hated the stigma that was attached to it. Yeah. Like, right, you're doing ballet. I was yeah. doing ballet classes, tap classes. You know them ones, yeah. like, doing stuff that... Would you hide that you was doing those things? Of course, yeah, I was hiding it, yeah. So when would you say you got to a stage where, because... You don't come across that. Like you come across that someone who actually doesn't care what you lot think because this yeah. is what I'm on. Yeah. But maybe that's with time, and maybe that's more so. Oh, it's definitely with time, and um, um, more so now. I mean, more so from from Bullet Boy come, and I won the most promising newcomer award, and things have changed for me. Doors open. I met some interesting people, different people, and I realized like you know what. I've been punishing myself. I don't know, you know when you feel like, what am I punishing myself for? Like, this path is there for me. Mm. I'm obviously doing well in it. At that point, I didn't know what was interesting people so much, but I knew I had something. Mm. So it was, a, it was either like, you know, shy away from it at that point. Um, it, it just become like a viable financial route mm. to take. I was able to feed my family and my kids from it, pay my rent or whatever, mm. you know what I'm saying? So it was like, it made sense for me to to pursue it and more importantly to to lock it down mm. as to what it was I needed to be doing, understand it technically and understand, you know, what it was I was giving people so mm. I could measure yeah. how much I gave people. Do you know what I'm saying? At that time, what was what was your why? Was there ever a money focus for you? Way before kids, way before family being your why? What was your why? Um my why was I suppose to make it was about the art, whatever, and then maybe I just love performing. But there was never for me, it was never about like money. Mm. So I know I know it's like it's cliche to say, but it's like black people are always in recession, sort mm. of thing. I never knew 
for me, I was rich. Mm. As far as I was concerned, mm. I didn't know that I didn't have money mm. until I started being pushed around people that had, had money. more money. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. But before that point, I was calm. I was like, cool. I I got my things or whatever. Rare, rare. Mm. I was looking down on other people like, yeah, you look broke. You know what I mean? You did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it like life, I suppose, just changed when I when I when I kind of knew that I could do what I love to do. It was like that moment, you know, when you're like, I suppose our footballers must feel mm. a lot of the time. Like playing football, when you grow up playing football as mm. a kid, that's all you want to do, isn't it? Mm. It's just kick ball. And then the minute people are throwing money at you for playing it, it must be a feeling of you're very lucky to be doing something that you enjoy so much doing. That doesn't feel like work. Mm. And that for me was what acting has always been acting and doing music has never been, it's always felt like light work to me. Like yeah. it's just what I do naturally. So um, it was a no brainer to kind of just stick with it and pursue it. But the why was never about making money. It was always, always the about the, the craft, yeah. So around that time, there was obviously a lot of hype, especially around the Ashley Waters brand, like Ashley Waters is in Get Rich or Die Try, and then obviously Dead mm. Man Running. I know there was a few things in between then as well. Um, another, I always get mixed up, the Another Hood or Kid Hood that you was in? Another Hood. Another, another Hood, hood. Yeah. Um, And I know all those films, they all just added to the profile massively. And then for me, again, I may be wrong, but how I saw it is you sort of went quiet for a bit after that, and then just came bang with Top Boy. Mm. Um, so before we get on to that, obviously anyone who's watching this, we know that our followers, all they want to speak about is <laughs> Top Boy. Um, obviously, as I said to you off camera, Ash, we had um, a bit of a, if you've got a question for Ashley Waters, let us know. And everyone, literally yeah. everyone. Me like a fool, I retweet, I retweet. <laughs> yeah. I, I, re I think you made it worse because yeah, yeah, you then sent them to us. Like, we've been trying to get Yeah, now I put the finger like, don't DM him. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you've got him today. Could you ask him <laughs> this? Um, so obviously, Top Boy, Massive program. I'm a massive fan of the rest of the team. I'm a massive fan of that program. Um, groundbreaking, man. I feel like there was no program. You said something earlier that I agree with, and it's like in the UK, I don't even want to use a colour, just in the UK, we often do things that just lack a bit of quality and execution. Mm. I feel like the ideas are brilliant. Yeah. I feel like the concepts are great. The setup's great, but the execution. And I find when I watch these things, it's like I almost think like, Ooh, if you, mm, and, and I'm not even mm, into films. So yeah. I know someone who is would think that. Top Boy seemed to be, in my opinion, the best execution of a UK production, I would say. Um, and that's obviously something that you should definitely be proud of because the actors in it were a big part of that and it was mm. very, very authentic. So how did that come about? How did that whole show start? How did you get involved in that? Um, started through, I got the script um, sent to me by Channel 4 um, and Cowboy. Um, initially, we thought it was just another, you know, hood, yeah. whatever you want to call it. But delving deeper into it, I think this is what people fail to understand. It is about, like, with film and TV especially, it's about all the components. Yeah. So a lot of new filmmakers, a lot of blind filmmakers, because, you know, we have, like, I, like, I call them blind only because, no disrespect, but they come out and go, I can make a film by myself. Okay. You can't. Okay. You, no, you can, no one can make a movie by yourself. You can't yeah. make a movie by yourself. You can't make a TV show by yourself. You can't make a web series by yourself. So you, what you need to be doing is delegating to people that are more experienced in different fields. Now, this is not to say, like, you know, I don't... If you're a DOP, uh, a DP, director of photography, you could, might have only been one for a year, but you're a better one than me as a director. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But there's Play a lot of men. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of men that will try and do everything. Yeah, I'm yeah, doing yeah. sound. I'm doing this. No, <laughs> yeah. you have to delegate yeah. to the best people around yeah. you. And I think that's where a lot of things, quality-wise, fall short. So I watch a lot of TV web series mm. and stuff. They're not even edited properly. Yeah. Yeah, people. Are, you've seen they're getting hits and that. Yeah. Like, and people are watching them because those people don't understand. But there's a general ge geography when watching something that your eye naturally follows. That is what a DP is for. People yeah. don't understand the depths of that. So crossing the line is peak, bruv, sometimes. Yeah. You know, some you watch someone's show and the camera's like, bang, 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 bang. Yeah. And you're like, Where, what room is this guy in? Yeah. Where? This don't even make no sense no more. 
And some people don't even know. I was going to say, most people probably don't. Yeah, but they know yeah. it don't make sense. They know it's weird. Yeah. But they don't know why. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Or whatever. Okay, yeah. But there's technical things that have to be followed and understood that will take, even if you're using your phone, I can shoot something on my iPhone now that will look good yeah. just because the way I shot it yeah. and the shots yeah. I used. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people don't understand it. So it is about, you know, it's about like bringing up those levels. What I was saying to you before about nurturing, like, getting people that are brilliant writers, that have got brilliant writing idea, but just tightening them up. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, well, and it's shameless plug, but that's what I do at my, my acting school, yeah. at Kingdom. That's what mm. it's all about. Like, you don't come through those doors, pay your money, and, you know, things we see that you ain't that good at, which going to help you to get yeah. better at those things, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And put the right people around you. So I'm, don't ever think I'm going to teach you how to act. Mm. I couldn't teach myself. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I just do it. I don't know really the ins and outs of it or whatever, but there's brilliant people that I know that have been doing it for the greatest actors for years that yeah. I will hire to come and help you do that. And then I can mentor you yeah. about the ins and outs of when it goes right and wrong or whatever, but the technical side of it, you know, you go and find the people that can come and facilitate Definitely. that. And that's what it's about, man. Was that what... What, how was that executed on Top Boy? Was that something you had a part in or did it happen to just be a good team and what they was doing? I, I think I did have a part in my part. Yeah. Kano had a part in his part. Like, And was it always written for you two? And, uh, uh, the scripts are always fully written in Top Boy, yeah. but we deviate okay. from the scripts a lot. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. So Ronan is, you know, is a white man, middle-aged white man. Um but has various connections yeah. to certain things. Yeah. I can't go into yeah. <laughs> But, you know, when he came to Hackney, he was around the right people okay. for this job. Okay. So his friendships are really strongly cemented with the community and with, you know, the OGs and the ends, so, which gave him pure access to all of the, the youngers and to whoever. So he researched for a good year, year and a half, like you can for, tell. for that show. He went in deep and mm. took real stories, do you know what I'm saying, that people had gone through and whatever and kind of put them into into that story. So initially reading the scripts, when I read it, I rang my agent, I was like, yeah? Like, are you serious though? Because if you're serious, it's a goer, I'm yeah, on it. Yeah. Because no one's ever written anything like this before. And yeah. Furthermore, no one's written something like that before and had it filmed. And had you seen it? So again, this might be naive, but I don't know much about acting. Do you see it for the whole series? For when you read it, is the whole story done? No, no. It's just okay. like it, it, some in some cases it can be, okay. um, but I think we had the first two on that one. Sometimes you have one script, you start filming, they start writing while you're filming, Serious? watching how so you are episodes, as a character. So yes, I think we had the first episode. two we knew when we started. They had the ideas and the guideline for the, yeah. other, the other two, but hadn't actually written them yet. Yeah. And obviously, depending on how strong you are performing, how, you know what I mean, they, when they're looking at it, they'll write more for you, maybe mm. write less, change things or whatever to adapt to how you're feeling out that character. Mm. So, but, it, but I mean, the main elements for Top Boy was Yan, Yan Demange, um, he was like the initial director. Mm. Now he was kind of a new director, um, he's Algerian, but had grown up with the man then. Mm. So he had, you know what I mean, he was quite young. Um, I think he was like mid-30s at the time or something, or early 30s at the time, and had like a clear understanding of our language, yeah. our thing or whatever, even though he weren't directly from there, but he understood it. Yeah. So he became like a buffer in between the writer and producers okay. who didn't have really yeah. too much, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, you know, he was, he could pass down what they wanted to us yeah. in a way that we understood it. So if you, if you know Yan, you know he don't hold back. He's one of them. There's certain scenes, there's scene, example I always use, the scene where in the first season at the end where I shoot my man. Mm. by um, Battersea Power Station <coughs> and he thinks I'm going to give him back the gun and I shoot him yeah. in the head. Like a few of the takes when I've gone to do the shot, like just certain faces I've made or whatever because you know sometimes you're waiting for the thing to go off but it's not going enough. You know you're like squinting or whatever. But Yam would be like, what the, what yeah, the fuck's yeah, wrong yeah, with you? Yeah, yeah. 
Bro, your face, fam, what's wrong with you? Like, bro, you're moving like a dick, you know, like, and just it talking to you. It seems like a real set, like, just from watching uh, it, it, it seems like life. a very real set. It was like, why is it that it's so hard to recreate that? Like, for example, when you look at the films that have been put out, again, no disrespect to any of the films, they're all contained in their own way, but it doesn't seem like anyone's ever able to capture that authenticity. But, but, this is, that, but that's what I'm saying, it's the, f <coughs> excuse me, it's the formula. <coughs> Jeez, I thought I was going to do that. It's the formula, bro. Mm. It's like what I was saying about Yan, the director. So him kind of having enough knowledge of the street and understanding okay. it or whatever, and enough knowledge of the film world just coming yeah. out of film school. Do you know what I'm saying? To be able to bridge the gap. Then Des Hamilton, he was our casting director. Des casts in a different way to other people. He doesn't go to Spotlight or whatever. Des okay, will just walk, Des will so, just walk down so the important. street. It's like the ingredients that are put in from behind the scenes are so important and yeah. we're not seeing that as Yeah, as yeah exactly, exactly. So yeah. we're just see, you know, if you just go with the script, yeah. like Wagwan, man, yeah, cool, or whatever. It's, I'm telling you now, it'll sound yeah, yeah, bait, even imagine. though you, it's what we actually say. <laughs> it's still bait. There has yeah. to be some, you know, the lighting's got to be right. The music, if you listen to the music in Top Boy, we did not go with just Graham yeah. and rap music or whatever. We actually got, we had it scored. Yeah, I was going to say you had a yeah. band orchestra. Yeah, band. yeah, so we had it yeah. scored properly. So that heightened certain things or whatever. If you were, everyone would know, you were, I'm telling you now, I go in the edit sometimes. Yeah. You watch something without music. Definitely. Dead! Yeah, of course. Yeah, Dead! Yeah, course. Definitely. Oh my yeah. God, I've seen some terrible, some scenes I've done without, without the music. The music. Like, oh my God, that was bad acting. But the, the, when the music's been flung on it or whatever. Yeah. Big it's the emotional. Are you allowed to be there in the edit stage of a program like Top Boy? Probably with Top Boy, I'd get away with it. Okay. I, I have gotten away with it. But then there's a lot of other things. They're quite precious. Like, you know, like I said to you, you come, you perform the work, you've done your job, you've been That's paid for thinking. it. You have no more rights to it, yeah. nothing. It's a buyout. Bye. Yeah. We're going to do what we want so with this So do you see it now. before it is? Some things you can, if you develop that relationship with but the right generally. people. But generally, you're, it's like, when it comes on, that's you. You have a look that's at it mad. then. That's so, mad. it depends who you are. Like, now I can probably, I'll ask, but you might, I'll ask for different reasons. Like, all right, they're sending me on BBC Breakfast News oh, okay. to do an interview, so I'm, well, I need to see the show. Yeah. So I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I yeah. did it a year ago, slightly. Like, so now I can watch yeah, it now. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? But... To just say, to demand, you know, I must have first refusal yeah, of the true. edit or whatever that ain't happening. You know, you know you, they'll throw all the maddest parts in there. I watch certain things back, I'm like, my wife's like, why did you make that face? Why did you do that? I'm like, I didn't even know I was doing it. But yeah. me, personally, I would have taken all that out. But I suppose then that is what makes the performance what it is. It's and having it's those little nuances. As well. Like, as, a, as an actor, I guess you kind of sign up to knowing that once you've done your part, yeah, you're, it's in this yeah, guy's hands. It's, uh, it's over, it's gone, yeah, yeah you, no control. So Top Boy had a massive effect on just the culture, mm. just full stop. Like I could say that in a sentence and everyone will understand what I mean. Um, and obviously we've had a large demand of pressure for another season. Um, I'm assuming that's something you still welcome, you're still happy about that, if someone demanding yeah. the show that you're in. Yeah. But how have you sort of dealt with all these politics, man? Like, I've seen other interviews that you spoke about, like, the back and forth and the contracts and the disestablishment and the Channel 4s and the so-and-so. So what has been going on that you can tell us and how have you dealt with that? Um, well, from start, we went, to, we started writing season three mm -hmm. of Top Boy um, for Channel 4, which was its original home. And I actually had done a deal with Channel 4, um, and then they decommissioned, they just stopped the commission. I don't know the ins and outs of the politics of what actually happened, but I know mm. there was a lot of restructuring going on mm. at Channel 4. The lady that had originally commissioned us left and was replaced. And as when anyone, you know, when any, if a new CEO comes into a company, they ain't trying to use the last person's yeah, cool. shit. They always wanted like, well, we're gonna make an impact here and change yeah. it up. So Top Boy was a casualty. Cause at that point, you know, Channel 4 never, people don't understand that we, they move by ratings. Yeah, Channel 4 never, I think 
their biggest ratings are usually like between 2 mil, 2.5 or something like that of them lines compared to an ITV or BBC of 10 million okay. or whatever for their main show. So you yeah. see the difference in levels. Yeah. So they're not competing. Do you see okay, what I'm saying yeah, in okay. that sense? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Channel 4 want to now compete on okay. that level. Yeah. So the type of show that they make, they want to change. Okay. So they become, if you notice, they become a lot more reality based. Yeah. There's a lot more mainstream dramas on there, yeah. whereas Channel 4 originally was the home for ethnic minorities, really, to tell their story. Yeah. Black people's shows and yeah. disabled people's shows and whatever. Yeah. They always pioneered that sort of thing. But um, I think in, the new, in this new day and age with Netflix, other platforms or whatever, they, they have to compete in a different, on a, at a different level. Mm. So I think Top Boy was the first casualty of that. Anyway... Um, it was too late for Top Boy to be shut down because at that point, Netflix were picking it up. Um, and so it was doing the rounds kind of in Europe mm. and then it hit the States and North America, which is obviously where Drake, um, you know, clocked onto it. And Drake had obviously heavily been involved in our culture anyway yeah. um, at that point. So, you know, he's, he's a fan of the music and a fan of the culture anyway. So he was watching things. Yeah. And then I just got a random call out of the blue. I'm not going to lie, bro. My phone rang. Someone saying, oh, Drake would like to talk to you or some crap like that. <laughs> and then, yeah, um, I spoke to his manager um, via text and then phone conversation. And I spoke to him and he was just like, you know, we're determined that we've been, he's, he's like, he's watched everything and he's watched a few different things, Bullet Boy, mm-hmm. this, that, whatever. He's done his research and he understood how hard it is to break in America, especially coming, you know, him from coming Canada, from Canada yeah, yeah. or whatever. And he, if he, when he sees people trying to do the thing, but you know, he will try and help facilitate or whatever. So, how, how did it. you feel about that? I was ch- listen. I was so gassed. Um, I was in a car going to my mother-in-law's with my kids, my eldest kids, and. When you got the Drake call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, mate, I felt good, man. Yeah. I felt good. And the kids were kind of like, a loudspeaker and all that. Yeah, <laughs> <man."> <laughs> nah. But yeah, now the kids were like, right, that's a, a good look. And yeah, I was just, I was, I was happy. I was proud. But I was finally proud that, finally happy. Well, that I felt that I was being recognised. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, I feel like. definitely, man. I'd been doing a lot of work. Mm. And very rarely get like a, you know, an industry kind mm. of recognition. But Why do you think that is? Um, I don't demand them. A lot of actors demand them. You believe it or not, there's a lot of people that go out there and like, I deserve a BAFTA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they get people out there who are hustling and whatever. But me personally, I've always just had the attitude of, you know what I mean? Um, I'm like a kid. You know, I should be seen and not heard too much. So Are the awards important to you? Yeah, I think they are. I think they they mean as much as you know, they you see that you are your the hard work that you've been putting in mm. is being noticed. Because for a lot of us, like this game is a lot of first of all, a lot of us are very insecure. So validation is good. Do you know what I'm saying? Like mm. man need to be told every now and again. Like, you're doing proper. Mm. You're doing really well. That's why I value it. There's a lot of good friends I have around me that will do that randomly, do you know mm. what I'm saying? To just make you realise because the stress that comes along with this, like, the, the other side that people don't see is immense, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The struggle mm. to be someone, you know what I mean, that you're not a lot of your life mm. and never really get to be yourself is a hard thing to deal with emotionally. You take home a lot of baggage, so... It's good to just be recognised and for people to go, you know, to get those accolades, to get yeah. that pat, pat on the back. Mm. And it, may, it motivates you to just keep pushing forward because a lot of it is just no, 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 no. Yeah. And crap, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Would you say acting's harder than music? Oh, 100%. 100%. In music, you can, you know, it's, in, in, it's instant validation. It's instant but is that, gratification. So but is that based on, obviously it can only be based on your experience, but... Let's say, for example, because music for you kind of picked up quite quickly. Would you say yeah. that's fair? Qu- quick, quicker than most, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. But would you, let, let's look at generally artists that 
it's not the same for them and then look at acting, would you still stick with that statement that acting's harder? Yeah, I would because, wow, well, I don't know, maybe I, it's me, you're gonna get your... maybe me being slightly judgmental, but I just feel like when I was doing music, it was, it was just overly natural to me, every part of it. So my music was my music genre. If you've grown up listening to country music and you make country music, there's not many days you're going to go in the studio that it's like a challenge, like you're going to do grime. Yeah. I've never done it before. Whereas when I act, most days I'm doing something different. Okay. okay. Most days I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like, I'm playing various different people. Yeah. Some of which I've never known really in real life or never understood. You know what I mean? I, went, I spent like the last year, I did six months of going up for the Sam Cooke mm. um, biopic. They're making a, a okay. bio, biopic of Sam Cooke, the singer, the yeah. American singer. I had to embody this guy for six months, bro. Like, read all his, listen to all his interviews, obviously the accent, learn all his songs, his speech pattern, how he holds his tongue in his mouth. Do you know what I'm saying? Things he says regularly, things he don't, how he holds his hand when he's singing, whatever. I had to become that person in order to try and get that, that job. Yeah. I don't think musicians go through yeah, that, okay. yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is, it, I think it is very, very hard to kind of, to get to that, to get to that place, you know what I'm saying? Where you can do that freely and naturally. Mm. Leonardo DiCaprio, Danny Day-Lewis or whatever, you watch those sort of people, they're at the stage now where that's nothing to them. Mm. It's probably like making a song, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cool, so the killer question, because we're not gonna, you're not gonna get out of there without asking you. Is Girl. when is the next top way? Or when is top way coming? Yeah, back? I don't even know why you wasted your time asking <laughs> that, that question. Because I feel it's like better you ask. Get, it's better you ask your dad. We're I told your dad before I told you, fam. Trust me. No. We're gonna get spammed if we don't <laughs> ask. So at least we've asked it. When are you able? Listen, to tell us, are you able to tell us anything? About I, the I next can top tell way? you. I can tell you. What I'm allowed to tell you, okay. and that is that with all of our heart, with all of our determination and our power, we are going to try and get Top Boy cool. back on our screens. Cool. That's all I can say. Drake, as much as people like to hate on him when he says anything about Top Boy or whatever, I'd say stop doing that because this guy has been pioneering and fighting this battle, yeah, for us. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying, yeah, technically? Yeah, yeah. Because it's not big in the States like that. All right, you know what let, I'm let me interject you there because I think this is why people would hate and I want to see what the facts are. A lot of... Because I think it's a brilliant thing regardless. I don't necessarily yeah. look at it and think, oh, he's trying to steal the culture, the stereotypes that you hear. I understand why people say that. Is there a financial gain for him to help? Is there something that could make him helping selfish? Or would you say, no, not really? I'd say there's a financial gain, but I wouldn't call that selfish. Why is that there's, selfish? Yeah, man, being a, a businessman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, if it's not Drake, there's some other producer that none of you guys know that's going to sit there and take the same money mm. do you know what i'm saying like why not have someone that is like he's passionate about the show mm. he loves the show and what he wants to do is produce the show it's all he's doing is yeah. being a middleman people just don't let him live to be honest i know but i think it's it's also to do with people not understanding that how the game works as yeah, well yeah, like that yeah. drake person is behind everything that you watch there's someone there that really and technically isn't doing that much but he's eating yeah. off the culture or whatever yeah. Don't think, you know, the, the, the Harachis you were yeah. came from the ends, yeah. then went there and then were sold back to you. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So what we're trying to do is the more people like that, like, you know, Drake trying to pioneer and be in those positions of power or whatever, the more chance we've got of pushing this industry forward for us. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? In that sense. So people should, I just hate the way like I watch, there's certain things that come out, you know, the papers went mad with he's going to be in it. He's yeah, moving yeah, to yeah, London yeah, yeah. to get into the character yeah, yeah. and now this and that and all that rubbish that people talk but the way people slaughtered man yeah, yeah. On, the, on the internet I just thought rah he's the only guy that's been standing up going top boy needs to come back. Your well, own English, English companies haven't even been saying nothing. Yeah. When I was saying to them before Drake got on it I was saying let's do top boy we can make a movie out of this you know how big it is whatever they were going no sorry we've moved on to something else no 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 yeah. no so it's where he came no, like and got that. the light back on it. People need to respect that, man. I fully, yeah. fully respect that. So no, I like that. I like that. so. So there is well, top by three is potentially going to happen. So we, can we want it to happen. Yeah, definitely. Cool. So we can put a lid on that. 
Um, now, fast track a bit more to where we are now. Um, along the way, somewhere in there, eight children occurred. Yeah.